The following is an introduction to the J River Media Center. I will be demonstrating on Media Center version 28, but most of what you will see in version 28 is present in earlier versions. J River Media Center is a very powerful application for managing media files, whether they are audio, video, or still images. This introductory tutorial will be limited to the audio support. Specifically, you will see how to search for and select audio tracks to play and add to playlists. I use the word track to refer to an individual audio file. I will be demonstrating the J River Media Center on a MacBook Pro. While the appearance will differ slightly from Media Center on a Windows machine, the concepts and functionality are the same across both platforms. J River Media Center is very complex. There are a lot of things that can do and typically multiple ways to do any specific thing. In addition, there are many things that can alter the behavior and operation of the app. Let's look at what you will see when you start Media Center in the standard view. There are four main sections to the initial display. The tree controls located in the upper left, the content panel taking up most of the area on the right, the action window display panel in the lower left, and the player bar across the top. The tree controls are divided into multiple sections. Playing now, audio, playlists, drives and devices, and services and plugins. There may be more controls in this section on your version of Media Center depending on the features that are enabled in your system. Given that I have configured my Media Center to be limited to audio, other optional controls are not displayed. The Player section under the Playing Now tree displays the track listing of whatever album or playlist you happen to be playing. Your music is stored on your computer in a file system which is probably made up of a hierarchy of directories or folders. This allows you to organize your music files in a manageable order. I organize my music files under a directory called Music, located under my home directory. Under that are the various genres, pop, Cajun, Zydeco, country, world, etc. Below that are the album artists. Under that are the albums released by that artist. And at the bottom are the individual tracks contained in that album. Such an organized arrangement is more for your benefit than a requirement for Media Center. Under such an organization, you can list the albums you have just by using Mac's Finder tool or the Windows File Explorer tool. When Media Center is first configured, you specify the location of your topmost music directory or directories. Music Center then visits each directory and music file under those top directories and adds it to the list of music tracks it will play and manage for you. In my case, I specified the music directory as the topmost directory. When it does this initial exploration, Media Center builds an internal database of its own to help it search and present music tracks quickly in response to your requests. It stores this database on disk for its own internal use and calls it a library. When a music file is added to your directory tree, Music Center makes an entry in its internal library with information about that file. When you delete a music file from your computer, Music Center will delete the info it stored about that track from its own internal library. The Playing from Main Library selector gives you more information of its internal library database and presents options to configure and manage that library. The audio section of the tree provides a variety of ways to browse and find tracks. You can search by album name, artist, file name, genre, or see a listing of the most recent albums that you added to your computer. The Albums tree presents your media files grouped alphabetically by album name. Clicking on the word album causes all of the albums to appear alphabetically listed in the content panel or clicking the triangle reveals the albums listed alphabetically in the tree itself. The Artist tree presents your media files grouped alphabetically by artist. Again, clicking Artist will populate the content panel with your albums listed alphabetically by artist, while clicking the triangle presents the artist names in the tree. The Files tree essentially replicates the functionality of a Mac Finder tool or Windows File Explorer. It gives you a hierarchical list of directories and files managed by Media Center, reflecting the hierarchy under which your files reside. You can assign one or more genres to each track using the tag editor described later. When genres are assigned, the genres will appear under the genre tree, and albums and tracks under each genre will be presented. Panes 
presents yet another way to select and display your files and incorporates searching by genre, artist, and album all in one tool. Recent albums will provide you a list of the most recent albums added to Media Center, sorted by time, with the most recent albums appearing at the top. Note the sort order does not represent the date the title was released. An album released in 1995 will appear at the top of the list if it was the last album you downloaded or ripped to your computer. The playlist section of the tree presents all of the playlists available. It is made up of three types of playlists. The first type is just a playlist, or a list of tracks that are grouped together that can be played on demand. The playlist icon is blue. The second type under the playlist tree is a group of playlists, and it is colored purple. The playlist group allows you to create a hierarchy of playlist and playlist groups for a more concise display and organization. Before we proceed, let me go back to the Playing Now playlist at the top. It is essentially a scratch copy of the last playlist from which you played a track. You can select all of the playlists you want, but once you play a track from a playlist, the entire playlist gets copied into the Playing Now playlist. You can then edit the contents of the Playing Now playlist, adding or deleting tracks, and it doesn't change the playlist from which it was copied. Some radio DJs use this feature to select a playlist, add spots and promo tracks to the list, and then broadcast the Playing Now playlist as it plays back live over the air. Whatever spots or promos that were added do not get added to the original playlist. Media Center maintains a history of the Playing Now playlists under the recent Playing Now's playlist. Think of it as a rearview mirror. If you want to get back to a list of music you just played or played hours ago, open the recent Playing Now's playlist and you will be able to jump back in time to an earlier Playing Now playlist. Note, the recent Playing Now's playlist contents are deleted once you quit Media Player. The third type of playlist is called a smart list and it is colored yellow. It is actually a set of rules for building a playlist. For example, you can create a smart list that searches your entire music collection and returns your highest rated tracks, or tracks you haven't played in a while, or tracks that are less than a minute in duration. There are a number of canned smart lists media provides you out of the box to get you going. You can study these predefined smart lists and then create smart lists of your own that suit your specific needs. The fourth section of the tree provides information on your attached devices, which might be a thumb drive or a DVD player. The last section, services and plugins, is your portal to extending Media Center to interface with the internet and customize its behavior. We'll leave that for a more advanced tutorial so that this introduction doesn't become too long. The next main section to the standard view is the content panel. It is basically a window that is populated in response to the selections you make in the tree. It will typically appear as two sections. The upper section presents items found in response to what you select in the tree on the left, while the lower section presents the files associated with selections you click on in the upper section. For example, if you were to list albums in the tree, a list of album covers is displayed in the content panel. Click on a specific album, and the track listing appears in the lower panel. The navigation arrows give you the ability to go back to the selection you were just on or forward if you already went back. And Media Center has a built-in browser that goes over the internet to specific websites that provide information on published music and artists. This gives you a quick way to retrieve more information on tracks in your library. As you can see, once you select a track, Media Center can retrieve information from Amazon, All Music Group, Google, etc. about that track or artist. The action window is in the lower left. It is comprised of actions that complement the functionality of the tree control. There are four such actions you can initiate from the action window, or perhaps more depending on the features you have enabled. Rip a disk, sync a playlist to an external device, like a thumb drive or a smartphone, build a playlist, and open the tag window. The display view pops into action to provide the image saved in the file, usually the album cover of the track you have selected. It shares the lower left section with the action window. This would be a good time to talk about the anatomy of an audio file. First off, there are a variety of audio file formats. WAV, FLAC, and MP3 are some examples. 
Each of these file types devote a section to representing the audio signal as a series of bits. However, the designers of these file formats wanted to include additional information, such as an artist's name, album name, year released, or even an image of the album cover. This additional information is called metadata. It is packed into a file as a collection of key-value pairs. The key might be the word year, for example, and the value assigned to that key might be 2021. These key-value pairs are also known as tags. When you open the tag action window, Media Center presents you a list of all the key value pairs that it found in the file. In addition, the tag view presents other statistics like last played, which is information saved in Media Center's internal library, but not the file itself. The tag editing tool allows you to see all the information that Media Center has loaded from the file. You can also add more information like genre, and you can override the information that it loaded from file with corrections that you feel are more appropriate. The last main section of the standard view is the player bar. It is the top section that includes the playback controls you're already familiar with. In addition, the space bar will pause and resume playing if you don't want to use the mouse or trackpad. The volume control is right under the playback controls and the two arrow groups allow you to enable repeat and random shuffle modes when playing from a playlist. At the right end is a search window that allows you to search for any track by artist, album, or track name. One thing to note is that the scope of the search is constrained by where you are in the tree. If you are searching for a song in your entire music library, your tree selection needs to be at the topmost level, album, artist, file, or genre. If you want to limit your search to a specific artist, for example, select that artist from the tree and then run your search from there. The last two sections to the standard view are the toolbar at the top and the status bar at the bottom. The toolbar contains all the typical toolbar categories, file, edit, view, help, and so on. The status bar at the bottom presents status and statistics relating to whatever tracks or playlists are displayed in the content panel. J River Media Center is very flexible. Not only are there various ways to configure behavior, there are typically many ways to do a specific thing, and many ways to customize the display. Let's look at ways to customize the display. The dividers of each of the main sections are movable. Notice the disclosure triangles. They are used to size one panel to replace the other. In addition, the fields displayed in the file list can be reordered or disappear entirely. Just click and move to reorder. Right-click to see the list of displayed fields and check or uncheck what you do or don't want to see. The size of the entire view is scalable by making a selection under the View tool. You can also select a different skin depending on your color preference. You can independently change the size of the album covers by moving this slider. And finally, you are allowed to create multiple views and store them in tabs in the content panel. I've been referring to this as the standard view. Well, here's a surprise. There are other views to J River Media Center. You can change it into the mini view, the display view, or the cover view. And if you have a particular view you're fond of, you can save it away and reload it whenever you want it. Before we proceed, let's mention a scenario whereby you decide you don't like a track and can't imagine ever playing it. One way to delete it is just to delete it manually from your computer's drive. You can also do this within Media Center. Just highlight the track and right-click on Delete. You'll be asked to choose just how you want to delete the track. The first is to remove it from the library, but leave it on the computer's drive. Then the track will be essentially invisible when you're in Media Center. The other two options physically delete the track from your computer, either by sending it to the trash bin or permanently deleting it. Now let's look at two ways you can build a playlist. You can hit Build Playlist in the Action window, or you can right-click under the Playlist tree or under a Playlist group and create and name a new playlist. Whichever you choose, a target space will open up under the Action window. Then you can drag and drop tracks into this window to grow your playlist. You can also drag and drop the file into the Playlist icon in the Playlist tree. In either case, note that the file you drag and drop is copied, not moved, from the file list into the new playlist. 
A third way to add a file to the new playlist is to right-click on the file and follow the selection to add it to the playlist of your choice. No matter which method you choose to add the track to the playlist, you'll see it appear in the target window under the action window. And when you click the icon for the new playlist, the content panel will display its contents. Note that the sequence of the tracks added to the playlist may not display in the order added. If you want to play the tracks in the order in which they were added, hit the sequence heading to sort by sequence number. You can hit the heading of any of the fields in the playlist track listing to sort on that field. Hit it again to reverse the sort order. You can move tracks around in the list by dragging them, or you can use one of the buttons dedicated to moving tracks up and down. When you finish moving the tracks around to just the order you want them played, press the Update Order button and the tracks will be resequenced into the order you sorted them. You should also make a habit of removing duplicate entries from your playlist, which happens when you add the same track twice. Media Center will warn you when you attempt to add a duplicate entry, but if you add it anyway, you can always go back later and remove any duplicate tracks it finds. Media Center provides a number of options for playing the tracks in a playlist. There is repeat and shuffle options mentioned before. They can also be found under the player options in the toolbar. This would be a good time to introduce the options that Media Player gives you to configure the behavior and operation of Media Center. Bear in mind that any option you change will be saved and remain that way the next time you start Media Center up. There is a way to get back to the factory settings and we'll show that a little later. The options are found under the Tools category in the top toolbar. The options are grouped into categories. There are too many to cover in a comprehensive manner without becoming mired in details. As I mentioned in the beginning, JRiver Media Center is very powerful. There are a substantial number of facilities that can be enabled. To see them, click the features under the general options. Each checkbox enables a facility that extends the operation of Media Center in specific ways. For using Media Center exclusively for audio files, you can see that I have deselected most of the optional features. The few options I do want to bring to attention are the playback options. One pertains to the behavior when transitioning from the end of one track to the start of the next. You can set this behavior to fade the end of the current track down while it fades the start of the next track up. This can soften the start of tracks that begin with a forceful opening. For this reason, I prefer gapless. The other setting I advise to check is the Do Not Play Silence. When enabled, the playback will skip over any silence that may exist at the start or the end of a track. Media Center gives you a way to save the state of Media Center. They allow you to back up not just its internal library database, but also all of your playlists and current settings. Go to the main library section under the Playing Now tree. Then press Backup Library to save all that information under a name you give it. Or you can use a file name Media Center suggests for you, which includes the current date and time. It's a good idea to do this before upgrading to a newer version. Starting Media Center after doing a major release update will return you to a blank state. All of your playlists will be gone. The way to get them back is to load your old library, including the playlists. And the way to do this is to hit the Restore Library and select the name of the last backup you saved from before the upgrade. You can independently load just the settings, and this is the way to restore you to factory default settings. Just pick the first backup you made when you first backed up JRiver and load the settings only. That's it. An introduction to the JRiver Media Center.